What is up, boys and girl? So, today I'm going to talk about my Herald Autoplay Bomber Crit Assassin dude that I've been playing recently. This character greatly relies on reaching almost 100% crit chance, utilizing Call of the Brotherhood, and then killing everything with a Herald of Thunder that's permanently up, and a Herald of Ice that chains through the mobs with a great amount of AoE that we get. As you can see from the gameplay, the character turned out pretty well. Uh, I honestly didn't expect that it's going to be so great, I thought it's going to be very gimmicky, but now that I've been playing it a little bit more, despite it being only level 83, it can clear higher maps pretty effectively and I foresee great things in the future from it. I also don't have any jewels in my skill tree, and as you might imagine for a crit build, that's actually a pretty big deal. So since you have the basic idea, let's get right into the gems. Our main setup is Curse and Hit, Herald of Thunder, Increased Critical Strikes, Increased Critical Damage, Warlord's Mark. I've done a lot of experimentation with this and with the limitations of the reserved mana and the fact that we want to run Enfeeble on Blasphemy. This is the setup that I've come up with. You might want to experiment with it a little bit more because getting the opening kill with our Herald of Thunder is incredibly important. Our second setup is Herald of Ice, Increased Critical Strikes, and Added Lightning. We use this in a plus 3 to Ice Gems uh, dagger, so that we can still use Whirling Blades and our Herald of Ice deals a lot more damage. The added lightning is only there because through it we are able to shock with the Herald of Ice, and thus we can always have our, our Herald of Thunder up at all times. We run the usual Whirling Blades, Faster Attacks, and Fortify setup. This is something that just works out really great in just about any build. For single target and getting our attacks ready before we have the heralds running, we run Flame Blast, Conch Effect, Increased Critical Strikes, and Blood Magic. The Blood Magic is sadly necessary, although if you find an Eldron Ring, maybe you can do something with the mana. As for me right now, it's just easier to run the Blood Magic and your single target is more than high enough as you can see from the videos. Another very important setup for our build is the Dual Vol Stormcall Spell Echo Ice Bite. We run the Ice Bite for the Frenzy Charges for obvious reasons. The Dual Vol Stormcall is important because whenever we have one ready, we can start storing souls into the other one, and thus we never really waste any souls. And if we meet two blue packs in a row, we always have a Stormcall running, or if we're fighting a boss, that's also incredibly helpful. And the spell echo is just great synergy with the Volstrom call. We run Blasphemy with Enfeeble to keep up our defenses. That really synergizes well with the Granite Flask and uh, Fortify. On top of that, we have a Orb of Storms and Power Charge on Crit setup for our Power Charges, which are immensely important because the Power Charges grant us base crit, and thus it actually allows our Herald of Thunder and Herald of Storm to crit at all. For the power charges we also run the Unstable Infusion Ascendancy Point over at the Assassin. This gives us 10% chance to gain a power charge on non-critical strikes. Whenever we don't crit, it really is helpful for keeping up our charges because as you see the clear speed is quite high and sometimes we don't get the opportunity to get close enough to the mobs to attack with the Orb of Storms. As I've mentioned before, for our main weapon we run a plus 3 to Cold Gems Dagger. Our offhand is a Doriani's Catalyst. If you cannot afford a Doriani's, you might want to put your Herald of Thunder into your offhand with a plus 3 to Lightning, Dagger or Scepter. And that way you're still gonna have more than enough damage, probably even more than on this setup. However, since this is a hardcore character for me, I decided to run a 5 link with a Warlord's Mark. The Call of the Brotherhood is an essential item for this build. Without it, you cannot do anything. A Three Dragons doesn't replace it because at that point our Herald of Ice is unable to chain because we are no longer dealing ice damage. Barracks Grip is an optional item. You can run it, I chose to run it because we do shock and freeze just about any mob. So we always have a little bit of mana regeneration for whatever we need to cast, be it Whirling Blades or the Orb of Storms, and then obviously Life Leech is always very nice because we freeze everything. The rest of my gear is quite random, so don't expect too much from it. I only run one 
potion. I run the Seeding Divine Life Flask of Grounding. This is so that we can always remove the shock whenever we want, and if we don't leech enough, we always have that burst healing. For keeping up our Herald of Thunder and just making the gameplay a lot smoother through Onslaught, I run an ample Silver Flask of Adrenaline. For our defenses, I run a Experimenter's Basalt Flask of Warding. I also run a Surgeon's Granite Flask of Iron Skin. I highly recommend you get Surgeons on all your flasks, however I was only able to get it on this one. And then I also run a Chemist Quicksilver of Staunching. The initial mod, like I said before, should almost always be Surgeons, but it is pretty difficult to get, so don't stress over it too much. For leveling, I highly recommend you don't use the Herald setup until you have all of your Ascendancy points. Without Deadly Infusion, Unstable Infusion, and Ambush, you're pretty much unable to kill anything with your Heralds because you simply do not have enough crit. So keep that in mind. For leveling, I used Firestorm, Lightning Trap, really anything that's popular nowadays will work because of how diverse our skill tree is. You don't really have to spec into any crit nodes. You can spec into some trap nodes and you'll be completely fine. You get a lot of AoE on the way, you get double curse. It's pretty easy to level this character to a point where you can run the core build. As for the bandits, we help Oak kill on Cruel and then help Alira on Merciless. It is very important that we help Alira because every single additional power charge is base crit for our spells. As I've mentioned before, the primary defense on this character is the Fortify and the Infeeble. However, we also run about 206% life, discluding any jewels that might have life on them if you decide to do so. We pick up acrobatics, and since the clear speed is so high, we can always have our Basalt and Grounded Flask up, which results in a very tanky character despite the randomness of the gear in terms of life. As for the gameplay, the most important aspect is to keep up our power charges at all times. For this, we use Orb of Storms or Unstable Infusion. Don't try and rely on Unstable Infusion too much. It will help you out every now and then whenever you mess up. But Orb of Storms is the main way for us to get power charges. Whenever you see a rare, try and one-tap it with Flame Blast. Get that Shock, get that Ignite. Every white mob will die automatically. And the blue mobs will get cleaned up by Volstrom Call. Try and keep up your Rallying Cry as it does increase your overall damage and not your spell damage. Keep in mind that Heralds are not spells, so they do not benefit from spell damage. That was also the reason why we chose to use a Doriani's Catalyst for our offhand. You cannot increase their cast speed, but you can increase their AoE through area of effect nodes. Both the Herald of Thunder and the Herald of Ice will have their AoE increased. Thanks very much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe. I will be posting a lot more content such as this in the future. So hope to see you guys on the live stream and hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks very much. Bye.